Welcome to all of the students of our soon coming King, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua the Christ. Let's go forth into uh, the power of prayer in Yeshua's holy name. Heavenly Father, send forth thy truth, for thy word is the truth in Yeshua's holy name. Three things I need for you to have. Number one, I need you to have the greatest weapon in history, which is Christ himself, his holy word. Now, if you don't have the physical uh, King James interpretation, uh, at least I need you to have the electronic version. So all of the moderators can put up that electronic version right now, www.kingjamesbibleonline, King James Bible Online, because you have to follow along, because if not, you'll be blocked. That's number one. Number two, make sure you have two to three pens and make sure you have a large notebook. Thank you, Pastor uh, Colleen. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. Let's go straight into the word of the Lord. Was your minds blown from last week's teaching? I said, was your minds blown? Put up that face, put up those faces if, if indeed your mind was blown. Make sure that you get your call your patriot brothers and sisters Get them off of Telegram, BitChute, Gab. Uh, get them off of Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, in Twitter or X. Because if you thought last week was mind blowing, you have not seen nor heard anything yet. I invite your attention. I'm excited tonight. Very excited. And let's go into this rabbit hole, uh, deep into this rabbit hole, beginning with the gospel according to St. Matthew. St. Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 to 7. The gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 to 7. I also need you to go to St. Matthew, same gospel, chapter 15, verse 24. Pastor Rita, turn off your computer, turn it back on, okay? Uh, so that's St. Matthew, chapter uh, 15, verse 24. If you guys can see the bishop, put a, put a thumbs up, okay? If you can see the bishop and hear the bishop, put a thumbs up, all right? Uh, that's Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 to 7. Uh, then, the, uh, not the key verse, but a part of uh, the text of Matthew chapter 10 is Matthew chapter 15. Thank you, guys. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. The key verse that I want everyone to concentrate on tonight, great to see all of you is out of the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, uh, 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 11. Thank you, Pastor Sam. No demonic emojis. 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 11. St. Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 to 7. St. Matthew 15, 24. The key verse will come out of 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 11, from whence we shall receive the subject tonight. Thank you so much, Pastor Colleen. I love every one of you, uh, every one of you. So let's go straight into the word of the Lord uh, here tonight. The gospel according to St. Matthew, uh, chapter 10, verses 5 to 7. Hear ye the word of the Lord. These 12 Yeshua sent forth apostolically and commanded them saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles, the outer court, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not the inner court. But go rather to the lost sheep 
not of the state of Israel. I need your prayers tonight, but go rather to the lost sheep of the nation of Israel. A house is not a Roman style corporation, but the house is the ancient Hebraic Jewish peoples of not just black America, but the black diaspora. Let's tell the truth. Not the state of Israel that's incorporated in London. Let me say this again. Not the state of Israel that's incorporated into an address I will expose that you already know out of London. And as a side note, that address that the bishop will reveal where Israel had been incorporated back in February is in London in Kensington Palace. What business does Netanyahu in the state of Israel have anything to do with the British crown? Oh, Bishop, it's the address is to the Israeli embassy. But who owns the property? King Charles III. I'll explain that. The house, not the British Roman or the Roman British state of Israel, that's a counterfeit, but the nation of Israel. Quickly, please go to Matthew chapter 15, verse number 24. It gets deeper. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Hear ye the word of the Christ. But he, the Christ, answered and said, I am. I am. One more time. I am. A -y -a Asher A A. A -y -a Asher A A. I am that I am. I will be whatever you want me to be. I am. First letter of the old covenant is I. The first two letters of the last word of the covenant. In Revelation 22 and 21 is A-M. Connect the first two letters of the last word of the Bible, Amen, to the first letter of the word I, you get the internal, eternal, external code of who God is. I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep not of a Roman British state corporation, the state of Israel. But I am come for the lost sheep who don't know who they are. They're only calling themselves African. But they don't realize that they are the lost sheep of the house going back to Abraham. Uh, there's an anointing here tonight. You see, there's no fear in the bishop. Our key verse tonight will come out of 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 11. As we go back nearly 3,600 years, 1 Kings Chapter 11, verse 11, which will serve as the platform for our key verse tonight. Wherefore the Lord, Yahweh, A -A 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 -A, the I am, or Yahashua, said unto Solomon, for as much as this is done of thee, 
and thou hast not kept my covenant in my statutes, the Torah, and the Torah becomes the letter of the spirit, the apostolic. Because you have not kept my covenant in my statutes because you had created three documents called the keys of Solomon, which then the symbol was created by David Alroy centuries later that the world calls the flag of the king of David or the flag of King David, which King David, the real King David has nothing to do with that. So God is saying in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 11 to Solomon, I will surely rin and split the kingdom. I want the Palestinians to hear me. I will surely rin or rip the kingdom from a masquerader. I'm not talking about the citizens of the state of Israel. I'm talking about the system of Zionism. I will expose this hypocrisy, this masquerade. I will surely rend or rip the kingdom from thee, the state of Israel, and will give it to thy servant, the black diaspora. And there shall come a two-state solution. Back to the body of the text, the gospel according to St. Matthew. Oh, my, my God. Do, do you feel an anointing here tonight? The gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 10, verses 5 to verse number 7. Let's lay apostolic foundation for one of the most powerful series that you will ever see and hear in this generation. Module 7, Volume 7, The Immaculate Deception of the Middle East. The Immaculate Deception of the Middle East. Let's lay apostolic foundation. Alexander Pushkin, the father of modern day Russian literature, declared that a deception that elevates us is dearer than a host of low truths. Oh, Pastor Holly, this, there's a fresh anointing a deception that elevates us is dearer than a host of low truths. According to the Shakespearean wisdom of one Sir Francis Bacon, who went by the code name William Shakespeare, in his 1596 Merchant of Venice play, Shakespeare declared, and I quote, truth will come to light. Murder cannot be hid long. A man's son may, but at the length truth will out again truth will come to light murder cannot be hid long a man's son may but at the length truth will out there's a period 
in Eastern, Central, and Western Europe that was called the Renaissance period between the 14th and the 17th centuries, which was a cultural, artistical, political and economic and religious rebirth, the birth and rebirth of global deception, especially through art, paintings and sculpture. The founding fathers of the Renaissance period between the 14th and the 17th centuries was Dante Alec Ira, A-L-I-G-H-I-E-R-I. -I -E Dante Alec Ira is an Italian term meaning allegory. And Francesco Petrarch, P E T R A R C H. So then it was allegory or allegory and Petrarch who designed the Renaissance period in Eastern, Central, and Western Europe, beginning with the Venetian dynasty called Italy. The Middle Ages to the modality of now, the entire Renaissance had its foundations within the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was birthed in 753 BC through twins named Romulus and Remus. If you look up Romulus and Remus on Google Images, you will see bestiality. Thank you, Pastor Limited. 753 and the Western Roman Empire out of Rome ended in 476 AD. The Eastern Roman Empire, called the Byzantium Empire, lasted from 330 AD to 1453 AD. So the Western Roman Empire lasted for 1,229 years, and the Eastern Roman Empire lasted from 1,848 years. That is a totality of 3,077 years that both the Western Roman Empire out of Rome and the Eastern Rome, Roman Empire out of the Byzantine Empire was affecting, infecting mankind. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. There is those receipts. The immaculate deception of the Middle East. I absolutely, absolutely love history as well, SSJ. Stay there in Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 and 7. So both Western and Eastern Roman empires became the backdrop and foundation that would lead to this deception called the state of Israel, not the people, the system. Again, the Renaissance period is also called the golden age of Venetian global artistic deception. Again, the golden age of Venetian global artistic deception. What do you mean by that, dear apostle? There is an Italian artistical term called pentimento, 
What is pentimento? P E N T I M E N T O. P me P T mento or pentimento is an Italian word meaning repentance or the compartmentalization of deception. It simply means that painting through layers of deception where painters during the Renaissance period, not just with Michelangelo and Rembrandt, but they would paint over the truth with layers of deception. With the intent, through the intentionality of covering or destroying the foundation of its truth. Pentimento, the compartmentalization of darkness, which is the global process of altering the truth of history. Altering the truth of history through the policy of global altercation. It is the deception of altering history through altercation. The war on the Palestinians. The immaculate deception of the Middle East. The offspring of pentimento is another Italian term called palimpsest. Palimpsest. P A L I M S E S T. Venetian painters such as Titian and Lorenzo Lotto were. Masters of deception. Thank you, Pastor Sam. Including Rembrandt, whose full name is Rembrandt Harmon Zoon, S Z O N, Van Ridge, R I J N, a 17th century Dutch artist used the process of pentimento of overlapping the truth with the intersectionality of deceit. Overlapping truth with the intersectionality of deceit. Thus decreasing the original foundation of truth in order to increase the value of its forgery painted on top of the truth. I'm laying foundation before we get to this masquerade what's going on. Pentai Mento is the process of a painter, an Illuminati artist, painting over the true history of Israel, the original Hebrews, by painting a layer of deception called the Roman British deep state of Israel. That's pentimento or the compartmentalization of darkness and deception. Do you guys remember sometime maybe earlier this year or last year, the bishop had revealed that one of the greatest painters in history, a man by the name of Annabelle Carazzi, 
capital A double N I B A L E Karatsi, capital C A double R A double C I. Who was a 17th century Italian artist and painter? Karatsi was one of the founding fathers of a leading style of painting called Baruch. That's interesting. Capital B-A-R-O-Q-U-E. Again, the capital B-A-R, which means sun. Rook or O-Q-U-E, which means system in Italian. That painting, that style is called Baroqueism. B-A-R-O-Q-U-I-S-M, originated in the 17th century as a neoclassical style of painting, designing canvases with the composition for the world to never find out the truth beneath the composition. I'm getting to Palestine. There's another style of painting called mannerism. How many of you have heard of the term mannerism? My people destroy for the lack of knowledge. Mannerism, capital M A double N E R I S M. Mannerism is actually a art form that is the complete opposite of pendimental. Mannerism is derived from the Italian word maniera, M-A-N-I-E-R-A, where through this concept of mannerism, instead of covering the truth with deception, they cover deception with what appears to be the truth on top of it. They cover up deception with another layer of painting what it appears to be the truth on top of deception. That style is called mannerism. Mannerism was developed by an Italian Illuminati artist by the name of Andrea Del Sarto, D-E-L-S-A-R-T-O, and then perfected by Luigi, L-U-I-G-I, which means Lucifer in Italian, Lance, L-A-N-Z. Can I take my time this evening? Stay concentrated. The immaculate deception of the Middle East, please stay there in Matthew chapter 10, Verses five to seven. Other artists like Leonardo da Vinci and his Last Supper has deceived the world. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. You've been taught that the Last Supper painted in the 1400s with touch-ups from Michelangelo and Raphael You've been taught that the Last Supper painting depicts what happened in the Gospels. The individual in the middle portraying what you thought was Christ was actually a woman by the name of Julia Farnese with a capital G, Julia. The woman, the young woman, on her right, which would be to your left, if you're looking at the Last Supper online, 
is not the apostle St. John. It is the daughter of Julia Farnese, a woman by the name of Laura Farnese. Why would Da Vinci deceive the world? Julia Farnese portraying Christ in the Last Supper, giving her a beard on canvas, was the mistress of Pope Alexander VI, who impregnated Julia Farnese, who portrayed what we've been told was Christ in the Last Supper. Her daughter, Laura Farnese, portrayed John is the illegitimate daughter of Pope Alexander VI. You have been lied to and you've been played. Yes, Christ existed, but he was not bisexual. Yes, Christ existed as 100% man, a man of color, a man of blackness. I'm not putting a premium, a premium on color. So if we're going to tell the truth, let's tell the truth. And the rest of the so-called apostles on the Last Supper painting were not the apostles, but were rapers and robbers and killers and pedophiles left out of the prison industrial complex in Rome and were given 10 cents to portray the apostles. We have been lied to. The immaculate deception of the Middle East, and you've always, you've always been told, including I, that the photo of so-called Christ from the chest up with long kind of brownish hair with a beige, light brown background of the individual going like this, that's not Christ. That's Caesar or Caesare Borgia, who was also another illegitimate son of Pope Alexander VI. And you've also been taught that the Shroud of Turin was Christ. The Shroud of Turin was the face of Salvador Monday, M-U-N-D-I, who is actually Cicere Borgia. We have been lied to. Great to see you, Pastor Sippy, my daughter. So the immaculate deception of the Middle East starts with the deception through global Venetian deception of perception. The building in which the painting of the Last Supper is revealed has nothing to do with Christ and the 12 apostles in the gospels. The Last Supper painting was painted in a brothel a homosexual brothel, a lesbian brothel, and a brothel for the pedophiling of children, the Marie del Grazie building, which still exists in Rome. The Marie del Grazie. Christ has nothing to do with that. But the Marie del Grazie, which is the backdrop for the Last Supper painting. And the photo of Cesare Borgia going like this, brown hair with a beige and brown background, that was painted by his cousin Michelangelo, who was also the homosexual lover of the individual in that painting, going like this with long hair from the chest up, Michelangelo died in an immune deficiency syndrome and his lover, Cesare Borgia, died of the same disease. 
which is called AIDS today. But we got black folk, not just black folk, we got the entire world has got that painting on their pulpits, on their church walls. No global spiritual revolution media group, New York or Los Angeles pastor must ever have that. All of those paintings must be taken down, including many other artists throughout the Renaissance in the Baroque, in the Mannerism painting style systems, which brings us to the High Renaissance period. Wait a minute now. You have the original Renaissance from the 14th to the 17th century. Now you have the high Renaissance period from 1490 to today. What well, Bishop, what is the high Renaissance period? Its creator was an Illuminati painter by the name of Donato Bramante. D-O-N-A-T-O, -O, Bramante, B-R-A-M-A-N-T-E. Thank you, Pastor True Witness. High Renaissance painting is the combination of Renaissance painting, Baroque painting, mannerisms, of painting on top of deception, then, then bring the truth, then bring deception, then bring the truth. It's a combination of the original Renaissance period, the Barockian painting style, and the third style called Mannerism. Now the high Renaissance period has not only painted deception on top of the truth or painting what appears to be the truth, on top of deception is called layers of deception. The term allegory painting, it gets deeper, is the composition in elements the form another composition in symbolism. Let me give you an example of that, what we call allegory painting. The female Italian artist by the name of Artemisia Gentile She, A-R-T-E-M I-S-I-A Artemisia Gentile she or key, Gentile, the S-C-H-I. She designed a system called the allegory self-symbol painting process of what is called today taking selfies. Can I teach? Artemisia Gentile she or ski, her paintings were self-portrait. She was the first one, actually the second one after the serpent, thank you, Holy Spirit, that de de developed the paradigm of selfies. Looking at your image, and according to the Central Intelligence Agency, Someone on the earth takes a selfie every five seconds. It is a self-portrait selfie, Barracue, B-A-R-O-Q-U-E style, that Eritemis or Eritemisia Gentileski had developed. During the Renaissance area, uh, time period, during the Renaissance, in the high Renaissance period, one of the paintings I want you to take a look at, I'm just laying foundation before we get to Palestine. 
There's a painting, a 1625 painting called Judith in Her Maid Servant. You can look that up not either on Wikipedia or better yet on Google Images. Judith in Her Maid Servant and Hollow Ferns, H O L O F E R N E S. Well, Holo Ferns was an Assyrian general that, according to the book of Judith, this general was decapitated by Judith. But in that 1625 painting, Judith and her maidservant, that's not the Judith of one of the missing books of God's word, the book of Judith. That is a self-portrait of Artemisia Gentowski, S-C-H-I, holding a sword near the neck of her maid servant. So this Italian female artist was the first one during the Renaissance period, uh, period that developed the art form of taking selfies, which then gives birth to a global narcissistical image. And yet, someone takes a selfie every five seconds on this earth. Is your minds blown? Put up those faces if your minds are blown tonight. The immaculate deception of the Middle East. Getting back to Annabelle Karazzi, if you get an opportunity Type in on Google Images an allegory of truth and time. An allegory of truth and time painted between 1584 to 1585. On that, an allegory of truth and time painted by Annabelle Carazzi between 1584 to 1585, which is now a part of the Royal Collection Trust of King Charles III. The Royal Collection Trust is the largest private art collection on the planet today, ran by the House of Windsor. On the UK.gov or gov.uk website, every single corporation, not just in England, but around the world, if a company, a church, a university, a city, a nation, a state, a principality, a power, if a ruler of the darkness of this world, even spiritual wickedness in high places, every nation that is incorporated in London is subjugated to the crown, including the state of Israel. I'm going to give you some time to pick up your jaws from the floor. The Royal Collection Trust has one million objects, 7,000 paintings, 150,000 works on paper, 30,000 water colored art and drawings, 450,000 photographs, 700,000 works of art, tapestries, furniture, textiles, stolen from all over the world. The Royal Collection Trust Incorporated became a registered charity trading company as the Royal Collection Enterprises Limited in 1993, but it was first created 
1660, following the execution of King Charles I in 1649, including Oliver Cromwell in the parliament who went to war against Scotland and against Ireland. And because of the thousands of Brits who died, King Charles I was executed in 1649. And following the treasonous trial of King Charles I came the creation in 1660 what would become the Royal Collection Enterprises Limited in the state of Israel is a part of that. It gets deeper. As God split the kingdom in first Kings, Israel, the Northern Kingdom, Judah, the Southern Kingdom. Now you have the United Kingdom, the Northern Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland, the Southern Kingdom. And I'm going to prophesy right now. God is saying, for thus saith the Lord, there shall be a two-state solution in Palestine. And when the Palestinians are free, when they get their two-state solution, they will be free. Then Northern Ireland will be next. Let's get back to the allegory of truth in time. That painting by Annabelle Carazzi. The allegory, an allegory of truth and time painting. If you will go to Google Images and type in an allegory of truth and time painting or go to Wikipedia under an allegory of truth and time painting, you will notice in the painting, ladies and gentlemen, that there is a winged figure on the left side of the woman on the painting, an allegory of truth and time painted by Annabelle Carazzi. A winged figure on the left side of a woman, that's his daughter. The winged figure is time. The daughter in symbology represents the truth. The winged figure is rescuing his daughter, the truth, as the winged figure, thank you, Pastor Colleen, is time, his daughter is the truth. You notice the right side of the woman who is the truth in white, which would be to your left side, is a woman called Pharmakia. I want you to hear me tonight. On the right side of the woman of truth, which is to your left when you're looking at the painting, an allegory of truth in time, that's holding a pole with a serpent around it, that's Pharmakia. And on the left side of the woman in the middle, wearing white, to her left is not only her father, that wing figure, which is to your right, but also the figure behind them is pouring time. What does this have to do, Bishop, with the immaculate deception of the Middle East? Because... In the painting, an allegory of truth in time, the woman in the middle wearing white, she is stepping on deceit. And the woman that she's stepping on is called deceit, is a clone or the pentimental covering that tried to cover the truth, the woman in the middle. Do you understand how powerful this is? You also see the snake, that's Pharmakia. So her father, this is just symbology now in art. 
So her father, the wing figure, is time. The woman in the middle is truth. Her father is protecting her, not only from pharmakia, the woman holding the pole with the serpent, but also protecting her daughter as her daughter steps on another woman who represents the state or the cloning as a deceptive entity that must be crushed. The woman that truth is stepping on is the state of what we call Israel, not the people, the structure of Zionism. It gets deeper. There is a 1733 painting of a deeper version of the 1584 and 85 version of Karasi's An Allegory of Truth and Time. If you type in on Google Images, an allegory of truth, an allegory of time, an allegory of time unveiling truth. It's a 1733 painting you can look it up either on Google uh, Images or anywhere throughout the internet or on Wikipedia. The 1733 version of an allegory of time unveiling truth. Thank you, uh, Pastor Jody Bird. That painting was painted in 1733 by Jean. J-E-A-N, Francosis, F-R-A-N-C-O-I-S, De-D-E, Troy. Jean Francosis de Troy took the painting of 1584 and 85, a Karatsi's painting, an allegory of truth and time, and went deeper into the symbology which represents the immaculate deception of the Middle East. In that 1733 painting, an allegory of truth, an allegory of time, an allegory of time unveiling truth by Jean Francois uh, Detroit. Thank you so much, Pastor Colleen. It's an ancient sculpture, a painting as well, but an ancient sculpture that is goes into greater detail than Carissi's painting in 1584 and 85. In the 1733 version by Jean Francois de Troy, an allegory of time unveiling truth, it shows a woman in the middle in white who represents truth. The winged figure who's trying to protect her, her father, time. On that 1733 painting, if you can put up, oh, you got the link there, thank you, Pastor Colleen, of an allegory of time unveiling truth, 1733 by Jean Francois's De Troy, you see the woman in the middle, truth, the woman's left, which would be to your right if you're looking at an allegory of time unveiling truth, to the woman's left is another woman whose mask is being pulled off. I want you to hear me tonight. The 1733, an allegory of time um, in unveiling. I love teaching. An allegory of time unveiling truth. The woman on the left of truth, her mask is being pulled off by truth. So it's, it's to the woman's right, which would be to your right when you're looking at it. And at the same time, that same woman on the left whose mask is being pulled off, 
her right hand goes into in front of the womb of truth because the masquerader wants to transfer deception to her womb. Oh, it's heavy. In that 1733, an allegory of time unveiling truth, you have the woman in white in the middle, but on her right, which will be to your left when you're looking at that painting, the 1733 painting, the, on the woman's right, which would be to your left, are four women who are imposters. Do you see it? There are four women on the, on the right of truth, which would be to your left, the 1733 painting, an allegory of time unveiling truth. It has four women who are exposed. Name Renaissance. Baruch, B-A-R-O-Q-U-E, mannerism, and high renaissance. Oh, Lord. Do you understand? Do I need to go through that again? That 1733 painting by Jean Francois' day, D-A-D-E, space Troy, an allegory of time unveiling truth. There are four women on the right of truth who are hiding, according to Francois' Detroit, it represents Renaissance, the deception of Renaissance, the deception of the second form of art, Baroque, B-A-R-O-Q-U-E, which represents the third deception of a painting called Mannerism. And the fourth woman, who is standing on the top of the three, is called High Renaissance. Let me get a drink of water. <laughs> oh, no one's teaching this. Listen. I'm laying foundation. See, I want to teach you how to discern deception. The immaculate deception of the Middle East. Notice the woman's mask on the woman's left. The mask is being pulled off. The maskless woman is, it represents a state run corporation. Everything is spirituality and symbology, not just in Venetian art, but historical art. It gets deeper. The immaculate deception of the Middle East. Now the body of the text after 58 minutes and 20 seconds. Is your minds blown? Put up those faces if your minds are blown tonight. The gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 10 verses 5 to 7. Hear ye the word of the Lord. These 12, Yeshua, or Jesus sent forth. The apostolic Greek term for sent is apostolos. Apostolos, meaning one who is sent to lay a foundation. He, she, or they are sent with a scent that's the anointing of the Christ. Oh, great to see you, Pastor Kofi. It's scent. Great to see you, Pastor Ronnie Roberts. The scent is not only apostolicity, but one must be sent with the scent of the anointing of the Christ. So Christ sent or apostolos, or apostolic them to go forth. Ah, that's wisdom. Now remember, 
Sadrach, Meshach, and the bad Negro. I'm sorry, Abednego in Daniel. But there was a fourth one, likened unto Christ himself. Ah, encounters of the fourth kind. And it was Christ who purposely delayed his coming to raise Lazarus by a day which took him four days to get to Lazarus because according to Jewish tradition, the soul of the body leaves the body forever after day three. So Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever believeth in me shall never die. Believe thou this. So Christ got there on day four, encounters of the fourth kind. And Christ, in the gospel according to St. John 11 and 9, or 9-11, Christ said in John 11, Lazarus come forth. Fourth, encounters of the fourth kind. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And there is a fifth gospel called Acts. I know you didn't know that. You see, the uh, Genesis to Deuteronomy is the Pentateuch unrevealed, and Matthew to Acts is the Pentateuch revealed as the spirit of the apostolic. So Genesis to Deuteronomy is not only the letter of the apostolic spirit, Matthew to Acts, but Genesis G, capital G, Deuteronomy, capital D, that is the Jewish rabbinical code for God. They never add the uh, capital O because it's too sacred to pronounce. So Genesis to Deuteronomy is also the Pentateuch unrevealed and Matthew to Acts is the Pentateuch revealed. So the Pentateuch becomes apostolicity, the apostolic. Christ sent forth the 12. Oh, that's wisdom. The 12 tribes of Israel are the 12 apostles unrevealed. The 12 apostles of the 12 tribes revealed. Uh, so now in Matthew 10 and 5, go not. Now stop right there. Can, can, can I just take my time tonight? Christ says, go not. Now before I go further into verse 5, the immaculate deception of the Middle East. So you have the Roman Empire. In the Byzantine Empire, a composition of 3,077 years. In 1453 was the beginning of the Ottoman Empire as the Sultan uh, Mehmed uh, II had conquered Constantinople in 1453. And then uh, the Ottoman Empire then went from 1453 to its fall in 1922, four years after the war, after the Great War, called World War One. Now the Palestinians today are the remnant offspring of those from the Ottoman Empire. Now, the body of the text, chapter 10, verse 5. Notice the term, ladies and gentlemen, go not. Now, you have to understand that prior to the 325 AD conference in Nicene, Turkey, this class should be packed out. There should be thousands of people. Get them on the air tonight in the class. Listen. So the term go not. So you have to understand prior 
to the 325 AD conference in Nicene, Turkey, God's word had no separate words. We don't, we did not see the separate words prior to the 325, 8, 325 AD conference in Nicene, Turkey, which subtracted 45 books or a 45 degree angle of God's thinking because that knowledge was too much of a threat, thus exposing the Vatican system of Romulus and Remus. And so the term go not, when you connect the words go in not, because prior to the 325 AD conference, God's word was all one sentence or code. There were no separate words. In the body of the text, in Matthew 10 and 5, the term go and not interconnected together is actually a rabbinical term, go not, which means do not knit the 613 zit zit, T Z I T, Z I T, or T Z I T, T Z I T. Go not rabbinically means do not knit the 613 tassels. That's on the shawl of a rabbi or a true ancient Israelite. It's called the Talit, capital T A double L I T, or zit zit or Talit, a shawl. And so Christ says, go not, which is a rabbinical term meaning do not knit the truth to the Gentiles, because it's not time. Gentiles represent the outer court. This is historical tabernacle revelation. So go not, do not intertwine apostolicity to the, to the Gentile world, because it's not time. It's not time for the 12 to go to the outer court, the Gentiles. Neither is it time to go to the inner court of Samaritans, who are in another sect of Jews who are partly Greek. It's not time to go to that inner court. But to the lost sheep, not of a Roman British state corporated Israel whose address is to Green Palace in London. I'll come back to that. The Holy Spirit keeps telling me, take your time, Bishop. Go not. It means don't amalgamate the apostolic teaching to the world. It's not time. We have to save uh, the lost sheep, not of the state corporation of Israel, but to the house, and the term house means the ancient genetical bloodline going back to Abraham. Abram means father or daddy, and Ham means black or burnt skin. I'm not talking about black liberation theology. That's a communistical uh, doctrinal doctrine of demons. I'm not talking about uh, black liberation theology. So the term house means a the ancient genetical bloodline that goes back to Abraham, not to Turkey, not to Mongolia, not to central China with the Han Dynasty, not to Eastern, Central, and Western Europe, but to Abraham. Now notice he says, go not. Now, if you remember Christ 
through his wisdom in Mark 5 and 41. When Christ came to a 12-year-old woman, you heard me, 12-year-old woman, because under Jewish rabbinical law, a child, a man or a woman, a boy or a girl, becomes an adult at 12. From the top of your brain to the top of your heart is 12 inches. That's apostolicity. Ah, the 12 tribes of the 12 apostles unrevealed and the 12 apostles of the 12 tribes revealed. So this young woman was 12 years old in Mark 5, 41. Christ uses the terms talithi. Stop right there. Capital T-A-L-I-T-H-A. Though we're in the Greek New Testament, but the rabbinical term for talitha or talithi is talit. Capital T-A-L-L-I-T, which also means rabbinically talitnia or talitnia, T-A-L-I-T-N-I-A. So the Talitha was a shawl that Christ was wearing and adoring, and it represents God's consciousness on the earth that has 613 tassels, or what we call zitzits, tassels, T-Z-I-T, T-Z-I-T, representing the 613 laws of Moses. Now, you've been taught here in the Western Hemisphere, oh, there's only 10 commandments. No, that number 10 is a tithing of God's uh, apostolic teaching on the Mount, okay, of Sinai. Mount Sinai is the Mount of Transfiguration unrevealed. In the Mount of Transfiguration, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, is Mount Sinai revealed. So Christ says, Talithi Kumai. Now, we have been taught that the term Talithi means damsel. Now, it was the 365 bishops who came to the Nicene Council in 325 AD. That's why history is so important. That it was Constantine and his lover, Pope Sylvester, had summoned. That term summoning means the law of uh, resurrecting demons or summoning demons. Another topic for another day. So the Vatican put in the term damsel. You see, but the term damsel was not in the original content of God's word prior to, to the 325 AD conference. Why did Constantine, Pope Sylvester, and the 365 bishops, each bishop for each day of the year, insert the term damsel? Now, the term damsel under Roman law was a prostitute. Can I teach? See, the term damsel under Roman law was a prostitute. But this little girl, a young woman, was not a prostitute. It's the same Vatican who said that Mary of Magdala, who was a true apostle of Christ, was a prostitute. The word of the Lord did not say that uh, Mary Magdala or Magdalene, the first female apostle, was a prostitute. It said she was a sinner. So in Mark 5.41, keep a marker there in the text, uh, Matthew 10 and 5. In Mark 5 and 1, 5 and 41, Mark 5 and 41. In the present day interpretation, it uses the Vatican term damsel. 
And that term damsel means maiden. Now look at what the Vatican tried to do. The original term was not damsel or maiden, which means your maiden name. The term maiden represents maritime law. Christ had nothing to do with maritime law. So damsel was a prostitute under Roman law. So this little girl was not a prostitute. The term maiden represents maritime law. Your maiden ship with faces of Jezebels or witches on the front of the ship, on the back of the ship. That's maiden or maritime law. Now, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, tell my daughters, the women of God, stop saying, oh, this is my maiden name. Because maiden also represents the name of a water spirit in maritime law. Your maiden voyage, your maiden ship, like Castor and Pollux. So the term damsel or maiden must never be used. What did the Vatican take out in order to insert damsel or maiden. The Vatican took out the term nation or origination. I know this is radical to a lot of you and no one will take you in this deep rabbit hole. So the term damsel is the title of a prostitute under Roman law. So this young woman is not a prostitute. And the term damsel also means maiden. Since this is where you get the origin of the term maiden. What is your maiden name? So every time you said this is my maiden name, you put a curse on yourself. So Christ actually said, nation come forth. Nation come forth as she looked at the 613 tassels or zitzits of God's word on his shawl. This is radical teaching. And so we've got to be delivered or we are delivered from this uh, global theological industrial complex. Okay. And now Christ said nation. But what, how did she die? Not just of a physical sickness, but her death, the term death state, rabbinically means a Greek term, corporatocracy. Pastor Sippy, you stay there. I'm, I'm praying. I cannot wait to see this on Instagram. The term death state, in Mark 541 means corporatocracy. Here we go, Palestine. Christ said, nation come forth and she rose from a state of corporatocracy or she rose from a death state of Zionism and was resurrected into Mount Zion, the apostolic. Oh, listen, so now, as a side note, there's a term in Acts 28, verse 11. Just write it down. We won't go through it because of time's sake. In Acts 28, verse 11, remember the terms I said, Castor and Pollux. Castor and Pollux. These were twin homosexual men who were also gods and goddesses having, uh, it represents a twin transsexual being of caster means to cast, like casting couch. 
and pollux means disease. So cancer and pollux was the front in the back of a ship that St. Paul was riding in going to one of the islands in Southeastern Asia. Because in Acts 28, verse 11, Castor and Pollux are called corporate gods or demons. Corporate gods or demons. Castor in Greek demonology was birthed, listen, during the Roman calendar of May. Pollux was born during the Roman calendar of February. Why are those two months so critically important? It's because the state of Israel first became a corporation on November 2nd 1917 through the Balfour Declaration and of course that corporate status was activated on during the month of May 1948. So Castor in Greek mythology represents the month of not just May in connection to November but Pollux also represents the god Febris of February. It gets deeper. The immaculate deception of the Middle East. So the term Castor in the term Pollux, Castor was a face of a principality on the front of the ship. Pollux was a principality on the back of a ship. Do you remember, as you keep a marker there in Matthew 10, 5 to 7, the immaculate deception of the Middle East, not just Castor and Pollux, but Janus and Jane breeds, 2 Timothy 3 and 8. So it starts in Exodus 7 and 1, and it matriculates to 2 Timothy 3 and 8, where Paul says in 2 Timothy 3 and 8, that Janus, January, and Jane Breen's means July on the Roman calendar. Every month between January to December are names of demons in Roman and Greek mythologies. So Janus and Jane Breen's were not only gods of Egypt, but also they were two male magicians who were homosexuals. During the time of Moses, the Pharaoh who reigned during the time of the prophet in Seir Moses was a man by the name of Ramesses II. In order to gain access, this is sickening, Pastor Sam, in order to gain access to Ramesses II, a male or a male child will have to sleep with Janus, and a female or female child will have to sleep with Jane Breeds, or a male sleeping with a male or a woman sleeping with a woman to have access to the court of Pharaoh, Ramesses II. Nothing has changed. And so going back to the text, is your minds blown? Put up those faces if your minds are blown. There are people, or oh, Bishop, when you just get to the point, you see that this class is not for you. You see, you can tell when a lot of people come here, they're not here because God sent them here. They're here because they're spies. You cannot understand what's going on today in the Middle East, in the Gaza Strip, in the Golan Heights, in Eastern occupied Jerusalem, and in the West Bank, unless we first go back into historicity 
to lay a foundation from the background that would take us to the present point of the foreground of what's happening today. Can I take my time tonight? I say, can the bishop take his time? The immaculate deception of the Minoes. Now, Matthew 5 and 6 and 7. Now, verses 5, verse 5 talks about the outer court, the Gentile world. Now, as a side point, the term Gentile not only means non-Hebraic and non-Jewish, Every Hebrew is a Jew, but not every Jew is a Hebrew. Today's Israelis who call themselves Jews, they are Jews because of conversion, but they're not Hebrew by covenant, nor by birth. So an Israelite like myself represents Black America in the black diaspora, okay? Dark nations. Let, let's just tell the truth. We are Israelites, but today's Jews are called Israelis. They're not the true Israelites. They are a kind of the original Israelite, but they're not Israelites. They're Israel leads. Connect the word light to lead. You get, you get the term lightly. Another topic for another day. The ancient Hebrews, such as myself and Pastor Sam, we are also called Shemites with an H, capital S H E M E T I C. We are shimmetical, but today's citizens in the corporate state of Israel, they're not shimmetical, they're not shimmites, they are semitical or semites without the H. They are a kind of a shimmite, but they're not the original shimmites, they are semitical which that term was made up in during the year of 1781 by Dr. August Ludwig von Slosher. Another topic for another day. So we go from out of court Gentile. The term Gentile also means in Cyprian genitals. Don't give us a strike, YouTube. Don't take us down. The term Gentile also means in Cyprian genitals or those who are non-circumcised. Gentiles, genitals or non-circumcision or those that are tribal through identity politics in the inner and the outer court, in the outer court, Gentiles. Also in verse 5 is the Samaritans of Samaria, part Jew, part Greek, most of them. But they also represent a specific sect, S-E-C-T, sect of ethnic Jews from Mount Gerizim, Mount Nablus, N-A-B-L-U-S, Mount Hebron, which is now in the West Bank, who only accept the Torah, but they don't accept the rest of the Patri or the scrolls of the prophets. Those are called Samaritans. They are in the inner court in verse 5. Now, in verse 6, we go into the most holy place called the Holy of Holies, not the state of Israel, who are in, listen, the outer court, but the ancient house 
of Israel. Now notice I'm going to say something that is radically powerful. Today's Jews are not God's chosen people from the beginning. They converted to Judaism. And you got many offsprings of Judaism, okay? You have the Orthodox, uh, those who are Orthodox Jews, or Orthodoxy uh, Judaism, or Orthodox Judaism. Then you have uh, Reconstructionist Judaism, you have conservatism Judaism, then you have liberal. Today's Jews whom the bishop loves, they know the truth, Pastor Kofi, Pastor Sippy. They are not the ancient Hebraic Jewish people going back 6,000 years through the bloodline of Ab, Father, Ham, Blackness. Thank you, SSJ. Listen, what God has called me to do tonight, to do tonight, uh, Pastor SSJ, is to expose this fraud, to expose the masquerade. I'm not talking about the Israeli people. I'm talking about the system. The system of Zionism was designed by a rock child Egypt who did not believe in God but he was an atheist a devil and a demon a man by the name of Theodore Hertz that's not his last name I'll come back to that so in Matthew 10 and 6 we go into the holy of holies so the outer court the Gentilian world the inner court the Samaritans and the Holy of Holies, or better known as the most holy place, the real ancient house of Israel, beginning with a black man by the name of Abraham. Abraham did not have blue eye and blonde hair. Stop. Let's get to the truth. And so in no, notice verse 6. Can I take my time, Pastor Leslie? Let, let me get a drink of water here. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, can I take my time? The immaculate deception of the Middle East, Matthew 10 and 6. Great to see you, pillars and strategies. My son and daughter, Apostle, are uh, both of these apostles are powerful, uh, a powerful team there in Tennessee, I'm telling you. Uh, Apostle Ty and Apostle Carlotta Kemp, love you both. In Matthew 10 and 6, the term house is not a corporation. You know, Pastor Justin, that is wisdom. My staff said the same thing today. They said, Bishop, we don't want to interrupt you. But Bishop, as you go deeper, go slower. That's confirmation, Pastor Justin. The house is not a Roman British global state corporation. The house is not a corporatocracy under the bylaws of the British Empire. The term house rabbinically means the genetical bloodline of Abraham. House is not corporatocracy. It doesn't have a registration number. House is the genetical bloodline of ancient Hebrews who are Hebrews given dominion over the earth as he rules. And they're also Jews, that's us, ones who are disciplined as you submit to God's nature. So every Hebrew is a Jew, but not every, not every Jew is a Hebrew. Today's Jews, they're Jews by conversion, 
but they are not Hebrew by birth. So the term house in Matthew 10 and 6 means a nation. Now, this is what the devil has done today, Pastor Colleen. Okay, let's call it nation state. No. God's people is not a nation state. The apostolic is not a corporatocracy. The apostolic doesn't have a registration number. And the apostolic, we are not owned by Rome. Neither are we owned by London, England. Who owes us? Who are we under? Who owns us? The blood of Yeshua the Christ. Thank you, Iris. I'm going to take my time. From, oh Lord, May 14th, 1948, the corporation of the state of Israel that was incorporated in the 2nd of November, 1917, and the corporation was activated on the 14th of May in 1948 because of the Balfour Declaration, Mississippi, which is the original bylaws of the corporation under London. Now, before I get back to the corporatocracy of the states of Israel, I had to reveal this to you. God spoke to me this morning, Pastor Colin. Can I take my time? God spoke to me and said, Bishop, you have to repent. I said, why, why is that, Lord? He says, you have to repent, Bishop, because you've been using the word Shekinah all of your life. Listen, Dr. Baker, I'm just being, uh, listen, I come clean. As Pastor Sam, Sam said the other night, last week, the word of God rebukes me first before it comes to you. I said, well, Lord, why is the, the term Shekinah wrong? God said the term Shekinah, I'll get back to the state of Israel. The term Shekinah is nowhere to be found in scripture. I'm getting to that passage, Jeanette. Powerful. The term Shekinah was created by Talmudical scholars through both the creation of the Babylonian Talmud and the creation of the Jerusalem Talmud. If you were typing on Google.com, Pastor Colleen and everyone, uh, type in the word Shekinah. S. H-E-K-I-N-A-L, she kind of the divine feminine. I want you to hear me tonight. So I had to repeat, wait a minute. So the term Shekinah, this is on myjewishlearning.com. Don't call me an anti -sem. This comes from Jewish scholars. MyJewishLearning.com, MyJewishLearning.com. Shekinah, the divine feminine, that's been incorporated in Western theological teaching. The term Shekinah is a Kabbalistical concept that has been embraced by Jay's feminists. I want you to hear me tonight. The turn, I wish, get, get some pastors. I want all the pastors to get in the class tonight. The Kabbalistical term Shekinah is the concept that has been embraced by Jay's feminists. Thank you, Pastor Colony. See, this is the show me state. I provide proof. Most of it comes from Jewish scholars. So I had to repent, Pastor Colleen, 
Lord, I didn't know. God says, now you know. The term Shekinah must never be used in describing God's glory. The term Shekinah is nowhere to be found in scripture. It represents the Kabbalistical divine feminazi or feminism of God. That's a lie from the pit. In the Talmud, the Babylonian Talmud in the Jerusalem town, my jaws just dropped. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. W. So wait a minute now. Why is the Western theological world and all of Europe using this term Shekinah to describe God's glory? Wait a minute now. Nowhere in the Torah, nowhere in the scriptures, or theological scriptures where you will see the term Shekinah. Shekinah, S-H-E-K-I-N-A-H, is a female aspect quality rooted in Kabbalistical cosmology. <laughs> wait, wait. Oh, pastors, listen. The term Shekinah is a the female aspect and quality rooted in Kabbalistical cosmology. And the term Shekinah in both the Babylonian Talmud and the Jerusalem Talmud, it describes the Shekinah as she who dwells within. The devil is a lie. God is not a woman. God is he who is Christ, all man. It's another female demon. Thank you, Pastor Colling. That's what the Holy Spirit just taught me. Bishop, it's a demon. The masculine side of Shekinah is Kundalini. The feminine side of Kundalini is Shekinah. Let me go through this again. The masculine, listen. The masculine side of Shekinah is Kundalini. The feminine side of Kundalini is Shekinah. According to Kabbalistic cosmology, Shekinah means she who dwells within, essentially a literal translation of the word Shekinah S-H-E-K-H-I-N-A, meaning she who dwells with God is not a she. Do you understand? The Holy Spirit said, Bishop, go slow. According to a Kazarian feminist rabbi, by the name of Rabbi Jill Hammer, H A W M E R. Rabbi Jill Hammer, a demon, a feminist rabbi, said, she says that Shekinah liberally, not literally, liberally reflects God. The devil is a lie. In the document that Talmudists teach from, it's there is a document called Cedar S I W D U R dash Ha H A space Conanot K O H A N O T Cedar S I W D U R dash Ha H A space Kononot K O H A N O T. It is a prayer book for Hebrew priestesses. Not a priest, a priestess. Listen, in Talmudical theology, there are women rabbis called Hebrew priestess. 
who worship the goddess Shekinah, that's not only a Roman go goddess, but also a Babylonian and a Persian goddess. Oh, Lord. You got to repent. The Jay's culture image of Shekinah is as a feminine substitute for the more widespread male image of God as he. In the Jay's culture, image of Shekinah as a feminine substitute for the more widespread male image of God as he. The devil is a lie. How is it, Pastor Colleen and Pastor Sam and Pastor Jody and Pastor Sippy? How is it, Pastor Kofi, that the church here in the West is using the name of a goddess in trying to talk to God. <laughs> but you don't know, because I didn't know, but my people destroyed for the lack of knowledge. The immaculate deception of the Middle East. Because what's going on in the Gaza Strip is a spiritual war, then it becomes a political war. Stay there in Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 to 7. In a level of Kabbalistic or mysticism, which is, is really witchcraft. Let's just call it like it is. Kabbalistic mysticism is also called the Merkava mysticism or Merkava doctrine, M-E-R-K-A-V-A-H. The Merkava mysticism where they see God not as he, but as she, a cosmic female. The devil is a lie. If you type in Google Images and type in Shekinah Asherah, Shekinah, S-H-E-K-I-N-A-H, Ashura, Ashura, A S H E R A H, on Google Images or Wikipedia, Shekinah Ashura, or Ashura on Wikipedia, Shekinah Ashura is a Talmudical Hebrew goddess named Ashura or Asherg, A-S-H-E-R-G-H, -H, meaning consort, C-O-N-S-O-R-T. The wife of King Charles, Camilla is a consort or is a partner. What these Talmudical devils are saying that the term Shekinah Asherah, or which preachers call Shekinah glory, is the consort or the wife of God that would take the place of the body of Christ, who is the bride of Christ. And here comes a counterfeit bride of Christ called Shekinah Asherah, the consort, a wife, a companion, a partner of a reigning monarch. Do you see how deceptive Satan is? Christ is all alpha, Pastor Sam. There's not a trace of beta in Yeshua the Christ. But I can tell you whose beta is Satan himself. It gets deeper, the immaculate deception of the Middle East. The term consort signifies that Shekinah Asherah, A-S-H-E-R-A-H, is the consort of God or the wife of Yahweh. 
And this is where you get the term Sophia or Sophia, S-O-P-H-I-A, that in Greek mythology was married to Philo. P-H-I-L-O, meaning love. Sophie, S-O-P-H-Y, means wisdom. So this is where, students, you get the term philosophy or philosophia, the love of wisdom or the love of the goddess Sophia or Shekinah. Oh, Pastor Dave, we've been lying. You see, don't feel bad because I was this year and God had said to me, Bishop, you got to repent. I repented of saying that word, Shekinah. Pastors, I want you to get on the phone tonight or tomorrow this week. I want you to spread this teaching and tell every apostle and bishop and elder or district elder or pastor or evangelist, stop saying the word Shekinah. God is not Shekinah glory. God is not a goddess of Asherah going back to the Assyrian, Babylonian, and Egyptian empires. Neither is God a consort. God is not a wife of him, so God, he is he all man who is Christ. We've been lied to. Oh, the Shekinah, you're invoking the Hebrew goddess called Shekinah Asherah, the consort of God. Listen, God's bride is the apostolic church. We are the bride of Christ, but we are not the consort of Christ. Consort means to be equal as a God that's a lie. In the term consorting, like consorting with the enemy, comes from the acronym term consort. So Asherah Shekinah also means Talmudically the creatress, not creator as Christ the man who created creation, but the creatress. C R E A T R E double S, creatures of the gods or demons, her consorts. See, tell me the scholars don't worship the Christ. In the Talmud, in both the Babylonian Talmud and the Jerusalem Talmud, there are scriptures talking about boiling Christ in semen. Don't tell me, I'm not, listen, I'm not a racist. I'm not an anti lissimite <laughs> Because how can a Shemite deny a Semite? To boil Christ in a cauldron of semen? Don't give us a strike, you two. It's in the Talmud. The Babylonian Talmud and the Jerusalem Talmud, the same Talmud that supports pedophilia. Thank you, Pastor Sippy. So the term Shekinah also means the creatress, saying that the creator is a female. That lie came from the serpent. And it is the Shekinah was created by Talmudical demons in an attempt to demasculate God. Let me get a drink of water. <laughs> oh, yes, that butt broken serpent. Listen, is your minds blown? Matthew 15, 24, the house of Israel is not a state run corporation. Listen. Stay there in Matthew 10, 5 and 7, and Matthew 15, 24. 
the immaculate deception of the Middle East. You were never, and you and I would never say the term Shekinah again, referencing about God. God is not a female. God does not have a feminine side. God is Christ himself, all man. Capital H, capital E, he, not she. The Shekinah Asherah Talmudical system was designed uh, by the synagogue of Satan. I'm not talking about Israelis. I'm talking about one family, the Rothschilds. In an attempt trying to butt break heaven. Oh, Lord have mercy. Before we get back to the state of Israel, the term Knesseret. Do you know in June of 2022, last year, the Knesset, the Israeli government dissolved. This is a year and a half before the October 7th attacks. In June of 2022, according to the Jerusalem Post, the Times of Israel, and the Herods, who do not love yet Netanyahu, it says that the Knesset dissolved and declared bankruptcy and needed to be reincorporated. As a side note, when you look up Asherah, Asherah, A-S-H-E-R-A-H, on Wikipedia, Shekinah Asherah, or Asherah means the goddess of fertility, the ancient Semitic religion, not Shemitic, Semitic religion of the worship of Shekinah Asherah. See, apostles teach like this. No fear. The immaculate deception of the Middle East, say there in Matthew 15, 24. It gets deeper. Zionism is not apostolic. Listen. Zionism is of the serpent, a global demonic rock child plan of butchery. There you go, Pastor Colleen. Right beside Pastor Colleen's name. See, this is receipts concerning Shekinah Asherah. Theodore Hertz, H-E-R-Z-L, an atheist and a devil, was hired and contracted by the Rothschilds. And Pastor Sam, you, you brought, you, you hit a nerve with me, uh, Pastor Sam. You guys remember back during the civil rights movement between 55 and 68, when people will hold hands like this, right? A right hand on the person on your left hand side, the left hand on their so you, in other words, they're, they're marching like this and singing, rocking back and forth, we shall overcome. But I don't think the civil rights movement knew that that is a global Scottish Rite Masonic ritual of Masons holding each other's hands like this. Now you're singing the communistic song that came out, out of the Soviet Union, we shall overcome. Stop, black folk. Now back to Matthew 15, 24. Now I'm going to give you some time to pick up your jaws from the floor. Listen, I got real call tickets to pick up your jaws from the floor. I told you your minds would be blown. The immaculate deception of the Middle East. In 1897, Theodore Hertz, an atheist and a devil, hosted the first ever Zionist Congress in Basel, Switzerland for the global historical mapping of Zionism. What is Zionism? It is the global political system of the Rothschilds 
That's why Bishop does not support the state of Israel because it's built upon a Rothschild design that's now incorporated in London. Thank you, Pastor Sippy. But I support the nation of Israel, the ancient Hebraic people going back 6,000 years. Theodore Hertz, H-E-R-Z-L, an atheist who was the face of Zionism on November 2nd, 1917, the Balfour Declaration, listen, 20 years after the 1897 First Zionist Congress in Basel, Switzerland. Zionism has destroyed over 15,000 Palestinians. I said it, 15,000. The state of Israel has dropped close to 20,000 tons with the bombs. Over 25,000 bombs. Where did they get the bombs from? From the United States. I want you to hear me tonight. I don't want to start crying, uh, Pastor, saying 15,000 Palestinians, over 8,000 babies are slaughtered because of this devil, little BB Netanyahu, that a lot of preachers in America worship because you're fools for supporting a masquerade called the state of Israel. I'm not talking about the precious citizens who are victims. I'm talking about the demonic butchery machine of Zionism. Eighteen ninety-seven. Now the Herzl family—that's not their last name. Herzl, H-E-R-Z-L, who was an atheist. Zionism is built not upon the name of Christ. It's built upon the Rothschilds in connection to the serpent. No, I'm not calling Israeli serpents. It's the system of Zionism of global domination through dropping over 25,000 bombs, nearly 20,000 tons of bombs that came from a company called Raphael USA. Raphael is a sister company of the Raphael okay, military and industrial complex in Israel. Raphael USA has just given the state of Israel $400 million worth of bombs. Why? Because this president, this clone, he is a, listen, he's in bed with Zionism. It's foolishness, Pastor Um. Uh, uh, Dr. T uh, Ty Kemp and Dr. Carlotta Kemp is foolishness. Stay there, please, in Matthew 15, 24. The hurt cells go back to 1,000 years as the Zagel family, Z-A-G-A-L, the Zagel family doesn't come from Palestine nor the Holy Land. They come from a section that's now called Chile in South America. So the blood ancestors of Theodore Hertz come out of a section what is called today Chile in South America and were migrate to Budapest, Hungary in the late 1700s. But Zionism is going to fall. Let's go to the key verse, which is 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 11. Is your minds blown tonight? Put up those faces, ladies and gentlemen, if your minds are blown tonight. 1 Kings 
chapter 11, verse 11. Remember, God split the kingdom in two. Israel, the northern kingdom, Judah, praise and worship the southern kingdom. Now, God had prophesied and spoke through the prophets. Go to the key verse in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 11. Wherefore the Lord Yahweh said unto Solomon, which means singularity. For as much as this is done of thee, because Solomon became a practitioner of occultic and occultism magic. All magic is witchcraft. Whether it's black magic, white magic, blue, it's all demons. Solomon had written not just the keys of Solomon, but the lesser keys of Solomon, which then David Alroy, centuries later, would develop the so-called Star of David. First Kings 11 and 11, chapter 11, verse 11, for as much as this is done of thee, Solomon, because you subjugated to yourself to the butt breaking by other nations by involving your life into global occultism and witchcraft and warlockism, which is called now through the books of Alistair Crawley, the keys of the seal of Solomon and the lesser keys of the seal of Solomon in the three magical seals, it's witchcraft and its symbol is the flag of the state of Israel today. I want you to hear me. First Kings chapter 11, verse 11, because you have not kept my covenant in my statute which I have commanded thee, singularity or Solomon, I will surely rend or rip the kingdom from you and will give it to thy servant, Palestinians. <laughs> now let's get technical. Both of them don't belong in that land because that land actually belongs to the black diaspora. Then it's going to be some people and their word doesn't say that. But listen, the Hebrews of Exodus 5 and 3 who built Egypt were not white. I'm not castigating anyone. And it did not make mention of any Jews in Exodus 5 and 3 of building those pyramids or building the Egyptian industrial complex. It was us. Israelites called Hebrews, Exodus 5 and 3. So 1 Kings 11 and 11. Now there will be Israel, the northern kingdom, and Judah, the southern kingdom. Judah is supposed to be up north because Judah means praise and worship. So praise and worship, Judah must be in your consciousness that will lead and guide the body of Israel, the South. But it was switched around because of the sin of Solomon. Stay there in our key verse of 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 11. I'll give you about 20 seconds to pick up your jaws from the floor, the immaculate deception of the Middle East. And it was David Alroy, born in 1160 AD, who was not Hebrew, Alroy, capital A-L-R-O-Y. David Alroy was not Hebrew. He was not Jewish. He was not even a, a Kansarian. But he was a Iraqian. A-L-R-O-Y which the moniker is called Megan David or Mogan David the wine. Megan, M-A-G-E-N, David or Mogan David, Alroy, A-L-R-O-Y, whose real name is Abin, I-B-N, Er, A-R dash, Ruhi, R-U-H-I, 
a Iraqian design the six pointed hexagram, hexagon, octagon, septagon system called the state of Israel with six points, six different dimensions in six sections of the state 666. And when you look at the star of King, not the King David, of first and second Samuel, but of Gabriel Alroy, whose real name is Abin Er Ruhai, born in Ahmadi, Iraq, in 1160 AD, who eventually was killed by his father in law, according to Dr. Eli Birnbaum in his document book called Beyond Time, Beyond Place that it was David Alroy or Abin Ur Ruhai who created central pogroms, P-O-G-R-O-M-S, which means to inflict pain and destruction upon nations. David Alroy will go on to create the state flag of the corporation. Thank you, Pastor Sippy. Because that symbol of six points has seven sectional holes within the two pyramids. That which is north, that which is south. So you got six points plus seven spaces in between, that's 13. Representing the first 13 levels of the global Masonic order, representing the 13 layers of bricks of the pyramid on the back of the US dollar bill, representing today the 13 Illuminati families, protected by the nine families of the Boulay Sicker Society. And the number 13 represents Goliath. So six points of this hexagram, occulted witchcraft symbol, with seven spaces in between, that's 13. In the, these Boulay slaves or gatekeepers, of the state of Israel. Look at the boxer Floyd Mayweather sending McDonald's foods, sending food not to Palestinians, but <laughs> May, was that his name? The boxer Floyd May, is it Floyd Mayweather? He's sending millions of dollars in McDonald's food and medicine and food. To the Israelis, don't get me wrong. Listen, why didn't he send that money and send food and medicine to the Palestinians? Because Floyd Mayweather is a slave. The Immaculate Deception and the many we stay there, not just in the body of the, of the text in Matthew 10, 5 to 7, in Matthew 15, 24, but stay in the key verse of 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 11 the ripping of the nation into two kingdoms. It's not real food. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. David Alroy took knowledge from the keys of Solomon. So these keys of Solomon, where Solomon got involved in witchcraft, the lesser key of Solomon, Solomon got involved in witchcraft. The keys of Solomon playing cards. Wait a minute now. The main card, which is, okay, witchcraft symbols beginning with the star of David. Not King David of First and Second Samuel, but David Alroy. The keys of Solomon playing cards. represents the key symbol on the flag of the state of Israel. <laughs> <laughs> 
and the six-pointed dimension of this hexagram, hexagon, septagon, octagon that's controlling the pentagon here with seven spaces in between, that's 13, represents the key symbol in the tarot card system created by a backslidden Solomon. <laughs> the symbol of the state of Israel is the main symbol of the Kabbalistical tarot card system for the, for the manipulation of money called money magic or cryptocurrency, the keys of Solomon playing cards, the three magical books of Solomon. And that's why this devil, Alistair Crawley, who was indeed the blood genetic, genetical father of someone named Barbara Bush, another topic for another day, had taken over the writings of Solomon when Solomon became possessed with demons. That's why God took the kingdom of God away from Solomon in 1 Kings 11, verse 11. According to the jewishlibrary.org, it gets deeper. If you go on jewishvirtuallibrary.org and type in Megan David, M-A-G-E-N David, star of David, it talks about the hexagram, pentagram system of the seal of Solomon's occultic and witchcraft system that destroyed Israel to force them into a two kingdom alignment. Israel, the Northern Kingdom, Judah, the Southern Kingdom. And the 72 keys of Solomon, written by Solomon in his dark possessed state, represents the 72 demons the hold 72 levels of death. You see, whatever Christ has in truth, the number 72, 72 names of God on the staff of Moses, Christ in the tomb for 72 hours, Satan brings a counterfeit. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. This is the show me state. The 72 keys of Solomon are the invoking of 72 high-ranking demons through the symbol of the flag of the state of Israel. Understanding the difference between the Star of David and the Seal of Solomon. The Star of David Alroy on the flag of the state of Israel is a six-pointed hexagram that is interlaced. The star of the seal of Solomon is the six-pointed symbol where the lines become intersected. We're told of 15,000 children, I'm sorry, over 15,000 Palestinians, half of children, a little over 8,000 children. Now, wait, 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 let's, let's go slow. Is your minds blown tonight? Let me get a drink of water. Here comes the corporation now. The state of Israel was first incorporated back in 1917. Can I teach? In 1917, on the 2nd of November, 1917, 
to 2023, the 106-year lease from the original, original corporate status of the state of Israel from November 2nd, 1917, expired on the 31st of October. Now, I'm going to say this, that we have a lot of attorneys in our ministry who are students, and we have a lot of attorneys who live in England, in Scotland, who are students. And they shared with me that on the UK.gov, or the some uh, has revealed it as UK.gov or gov.uk, that the original birth certificate or the original certification of the state of Israel's original corporate status was November 2nd, 1917 through the Balfour Declaration. Five years later in 1922, not only does the Ottoman Empire fall, but Palestine, in 1922, formally, legally, un comes, uh, that was under the Ottoman Empire territories, is now in 1922, placed under the British Empire via through the League of Nations in 1922. Then from 1922s, 26 years later, on May 15th, 1948, three years after World War II, the 19 corporate status of this debacle, the state of Israel, is activated on May 15th, 1948. Great Britain ceded its Palestinian mandate that they got from the League of Nations in 1922. Then 26 years later, in 1948, Great Britain transferred the deed over to the Rothschilds and thus a fabricated house, the state of Israel, was born on May 15th, 1948. That 106-year corporate status expired on October 31st. On gov.uk, Pastor Colleen, all of the moderators, you can type in gov.uk. Now, according to attorneys that are students who live in London, barristers, they said that any corporation bishop, whether it's a nation, a state, a territory, a parish, any banking system or cartel or university or college that are made mention on gov.uk, they are owned by the House of Windsor. On gov.uk, oh Lord have mercy. The state of Israel reincorporated themselves eight months before the October 7th attacks. According to international law, no corporation can reincorporate under the same name if their original corporation status has not expired. It gets deeper. The Knesset is dissolved a year before in June of 2022 because the state of Israel is bankrupt as of June 2022. 
According to gov.uk, the corporation registration number of the state of Israel who reincorporated themselves back on February 23rd, 2023, eight months before the October 7th attacks, and eight months before their original corporate status would expire on October 31st, reincorporated as the state of Israel according to international law. No one can reincorporate themselves, their company, or their nation under the same corporate name that you first became a corporation. And if the first corporation status had not expired, so they reincorporated as a state of Israel on February 23rd, 2023, eight months before the October 7th attacks and eight months before the original corporate status would expire on October 31st. The registration number is capital O, capital E, then 027517. Capital O, capital E, then 0257517. Capital O, capital E, then 027. 517, they are re-registered in connection to the address of 2 Palace Green, London, UK, postal code WA8 space 4QB. Wait a minute now. Why would, number one, the state of Israel need to incorporate themselves before the original corporate status would end on October 31st. According to international law, if a nation like the state of Israel reincorporates themselves like they did in February 23rd, 2023, before the original corporate status it would expire in October 31st, 2023. In other words, according to attorneys who are some of our students who live in London, they're saying, Bishop, Bishop, the Palestinians are in a war with a counterfeit state corporation and are in war with a corporation that no longer exists. I want you to hear me tonight. The state of Israel, not the people, its corporation doesn't legally exist because they reincorporated themselves eight months prior to their original corporate status would expire on October 31st. Why would they do that? According to attorneys, not just here in the United States that I know and are close to the ministry, they are students, but some attorneys in London, they're saying that the state of Israel no longer exists because you cannot reincorporate yourself under the same name if your original corporation status that goes back to the 1917 Balfour Declaration hasn't had expired yet until October 31st, but you have to reincorporate yourself eight months before the attacks and eight months before the expiration date of October 31st. It gets deeper. The registration address, consort, thank you, Pastor Sippy. The registration address 
of this debacle state of Israel because it no longer exists. You can't reincorporate yourself in the same time frame that your original corporation has expired. So in February 23rd, 2023, the state of Israel was given a registration number, capital O, capital E, 0275117. The address is 2 Palace Green, London, England. Who owns 2 Palace Green? Kensington Palace. Who owns Kensington Palace? The House of Windsor and King Charles III. What business does King Charles III in the House of Windsor that owns 2 Palace Green, the location of not just Kensington Palace that owns that property, But the Israeli embassy is at that address and the embassy is owned by Kensington Palace that's owned by the House of Windsor that's owned by King Charles III. In other words, Palestinians, you are being bombed by a corporation who no longer exists. But what they did, Pastor Colleen, the state of Israel, they feel that they don't need to obey international law because they, the state of Israel, has yet to sign the 1949 international law called the Geneva Convention. And because the state of Israel, this fabrication has not signed the 1949 Geneva, Geneva Convention, then they found a loophole where they can reincorporate themselves before the original corporation expires on October 31st. It gets deeper. The state of Israel no longer exists. A lot of you said, oh, the state of Israel was reborn or reincorporated on February 23rd, 2023. You cannot legally reincorporate yourself, your business, a city, a county, a state, or a nation before your original corporate status expires because that's a felony. So the address at Two Palace Green belongs to Kensington Palace that belongs to the House of Windsors, the House of Windsor who are Nazis themselves, the House of Saxe Goldberg Gotha that's ran by King Charles III. In other words, King Charles III owns the state of Israel. Do you understand? You see, we, you and I are simply being lied to. And you and I are simply being played. It's there on gov.uk. I'm not making this up. Why would the state of Israel be a registered corporation and entity in not London, England, but in the city of London, London is a corporation. Wait a minute. Israel, the state of Israel is not incorporated in London, England. They are incorporated in the city of London. That's a corporation. London, England is not a corporation, but the city of London is a corporation that has the address of Two Palace Green, London, UK, W84QB, which re-register in a legal entity the state of Israel as an overseas British corporation. <laughs> they're telling you, they don't care. See, they're not covering this up. 
blatant, it's, um, listen, it's unbelievable, Pastor Rick. Why are preachers, not just in America, but throughout the world, supporting a fabricated state of Israel that's a masquerade coming off the face? You cannot reincorporate your business or your country in the same time frame where your original corporate status has not expired. But why would Netanyahu need to do that? The Knesset is bankrupt. The state of Israel is bankrupt. So let's create a 9-11 catastrophe. Let's create an October 7th surprise. And allow me to ask you a question. How can the most powerful military system on earth called, listen, the Iron Dome, how is it that the Iron Dome the most sophisticated and the most powerful military system on earth be penetrated by Hamas. I'll tell you because someone within the Netanyahu administration or someone within the Knesset was paid off. I gotta go. Oh, oh, Bishop, okay, there was a snap foo. There was a technique. There was a glitch. Stop! It was an inside job. All planned. Because Netanyahu was getting ready to go to prison for crimes against the Israeli people. So let's create a catastrophe, sending Mossad agents into Hamas and sending Hamas agents into Mossad. We were turned off the Iron Dome system so that Hamas can come in little helicopters? No, I'm telling you, it was planned as an inside job, as the immaculate deception of the Middle East. And now the allegory of truth in time painting and the allegory of unveiling truth is being peeled off. The mask is coming off, Netanyahu. Two pounds. Wait a minute. The House of Saxe Goldberg Gotha or British Nazis, King Charles III, and the House of Windsor owns the state of Israel. Why do you think that Israel, listen, why do you think that, that England doesn't want to stop the state of Israel? Because when we create a 9-11 catastrophe, then we get money from the United States, from England, and from France. You're being deceived. Not just Israelis. The world is being deceived. Because Palestinians are batting against the registration number of OE0275175. That's what you're battling against Palestinians. You re register not as the house of Israel, Matthew 10 and 6, but as a Roman British state government that's no longer owned by the Knesset, but by the Rothschilds through the House of Windsor. But it's not really a real registration number. Wait a minute, OE027517. So they reincorporated eight months before the attacks and eight months be before their current registration expires on October 31st. In other words, the state of Israel is dissolved. 
the Palestinians have already won. I want you to hear me tonight. The Palestinians have already won. Wait a minute now. Wait, wait, wait. Bombs on Gaza. There's been more bombs, over 20, is to my understanding, over 25,000 bombs. Almost two times more than the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. I want you to hear me tonight. Why were these devils, I'm not talking about Israelis, I'm talking about the state, the fraudulent dissolved state, of Israel, why would they drop, okay, 20,000 tons of bombs, 25,000 bombs that are two times more powerful than the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima near the end of World War II. I'm the, you're dealing with the synagogue of Satan. I'm not talking about Israeli people. I'm talking one family who has caused destruction, mischief through global dispopulation for 2,000 years. And the, there is a, the Gaza government said today that the state of Israel, a dissolved corporation, because you cannot reincorporate under the same name before your original corporate status runs out on October 31st. The Gaza government said that the state of Israel has dropped more than 20,000 tons of bombs, 25,000 bombs that they got from the United States with the blessing of Joe Bill Back Butter Buck Broken Diaper Brandon. Two times more than the power that was, oh, listen, I don't want to start crying. Two times more powerful then the atom, the hydrogen bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. Why? Because the corporate status of Israel is a debacle. It's a lie. And why are you preach not you, preacher, but why are you preachers in America? John Hagee, the Hagee family, Creflo $50 bill. Joe Shostein, TD6, why are you supporting a dissolved corporation that's owned by King Charles through the Rothschilds? Why are you, listen, why is America so afraid of these Zionists? Because all of America and American politicians are being blackmailed. So the 106-year corporate lease, the corporate status ended on October 31st, but eight months prior on February 23rd, 2023, Israel became reincorporated as the state of Israel. Oh, they're called the state of Israel. No, it's a dissolved corporation. It's a scam. I want you to come closer to me. Netanyahu in the Zionist butchery of the state of Israel, the masquerade is over. The masquerade is over. The mass has come off. It's a scam. Raphael, R-A-F-A-E-L, USA, is a sister company of the Raphael in Israeli industrial complex out of the state of Israel has given now as of today $400 million transfer of precision bombs. So it went from 370 million to 400 million today. The transference of precision bombs sent to the state of Israel to bomb 50 15,000 Palestinians, 8,000 children, and over 20,000 houses and businesses. For what? Because you're being exposed. 
20,000 tons of bombs, but you can't see people on this street, okay? 25,000 bombs, but you can't feed the homeless. That's three tons of bomb for a bombing for every person killed. Three tons of bombing for every person killed since October 7th. Zionism is through. Because this dissolved corporation, Palestinians, Palis listen, the Palestinians already had the victory because they're fighting against an entity that's masquerading as Isaac and they're battling against the, an entity who is supported by the West because the West as being blackmailed and butt broken by Netanyahu. But the Palestinians, you already won the victory according to Christ because you're fighting in a war against a dissolved corporation because you cannot reincorporate under the same name before your original corporation runs out. Now, the UK is making Net Netanyahu look stupid. Type in on Google.com. Israel is trapped by Western guilt. Israel is trapped by Western guilt. It's on the unheard blog, unheard.com. An opt-ed, October 20th, 2023, two weeks after their initial attacks, Israel, Israel is trapped by Western guilt. An opt-in written by Tom McTague, M-C-T-A-G-U-E, Israel, Israel is trapped by Western guilt. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. On that site, if you guys can click on the link, right beside Pastor Colleen's name when you get time, there is a photo of the so-called Star of David. When I say so-called, it King David of First and Second Samuel and First and Second Chronicles has nothing to do with this Star of David. That's after David Alroy or Megan David. On that link, right beside Pastor Colleen's name, you, you will see the symbol of occultism, the six-pointed star moved upright or moved up left. It looks like the face of an owl. On Israel is trapped by Western guilt, October 20, 2023, on unheard.com, that link right beside Pastor Colleen's name. And Pastor Colleen, if you can put up that link again on unheard. Israel is trapped by Western guilt. You see the six-pointed hexagram vertically that is shaped like the face of the owl of Minerva. M-I-N-E-R-V-A. A Roman goddess, a part of the Greek Empire, it became the Illuminati symbol on the back of the $1 bill that's on every Illuminati symbol, including the private jets of actors and actresses and music stars like Drake. The Owl of Minerva is also shown on that link, Israel is trapped by Western guilt. The Owl of Minerva is on fire. When you take the so-called Star of David and turn it right side up or left side up, it becomes the face of the Owl of Minerva, the symbol of the global Illuminati system. And that is my end tonight after two hours 49 minutes in, 25 seconds. 
of volume seven, module seven, volume seven of the immaculate deception of the Middle East. And I thank you. <laughs> Wait a minute now. That star, that cultic star of David Alroy, if you turn it right side up or left side up, it becomes the face of the owl of Minerva. That's right. Oh, my God. Sister Andrea, you are 100% right. Okay, does anyone else see what appears to be a creature formed with fire in the pick? You see, nothing is by accident. Right inside the star. The Owl of Minerva. Thank you guys for being with the bishop tonight. And according to the government of England, it says clearly on gov.uk that the state of Israel is a British corporation under the Rothschilds of the registration number of capital O, capital E, 027517. But it's not really a corporation because you cannot reincorporate under the same name before your original corporation status expires, which it did in October 31st. But Netanyahu reincorporated this debacle eight months before the October 7th attacks. Why? So let's create a 9-11 catastrophe. I have not seen one picture of any Israeli child's head being decapitated. I have, the, I have not seen one picture, and I have not seen any proof, okay, that some jihadist faction group bombed that hospital, the first hospital, okay. So you're telling us that Hamas did it, but yet the state of Israel has bombed 16 more additional hospitals. But you want us to believe that you did not bomb that first hospital. Stop! You're lying. And the churches of Christ Stop supporting this mockery. Stop supporting this fabrication. And stop supporting this system that's Rothschild. Stop supporting Netanyahu. He doesn't care about Christ and he doesn't care about you, the church, but you're giving him millions of dollars because you are deceived and you're ignorant. John Hagee, you're ignorant. I got to be careful. I don't want to get, want to get a strike or be taken down. Christian Zionists. If you're going to support anyone, support the true Hebrews in the true ancient Jews, black America in the black diaspora. But you won't do that because you're sticking us to Africa. But you don't know that the original Hebrews in the ancient Jews came up out of that land and migrated to what is called Africa today. Israel, the state of Israel is a fabrication, not the people. The system of Zionism is a fabrication. In other words, Palestinians, you are in a war against a dissolved corporation that no longer exists because you can't reincorporate yourself within the same time frame that your original corporate, corporate status has not expired. And Joe Biden, you're going to reap what you sow. $400 million with the bombs that Raphael USA sent to the IDF. Why? To destroy people who have nothing to do with terrorism. Thank you, everyone, for being with us here tonight. <laughs> Listen. Thank you, everyone, for being with the bishop tonight. And I thank you guys for your time, uh, for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be with us, okay? Benjamin, you're gone, okay? You're a devil. Listen, don't come in here disrespecting God, okay? 
and don't come in here disrespecting me, you're gone. You see, this is what happens, okay, when trash comes in here, okay? This is what, ha this is what happens when Negroes come in, okay, who don't know who they are, what they are, and they don't know where they're going, okay? Benjamin Coyle, you're gone. Don't come in here with your garbage. How many of you was your minds blown tonight? Put up those faces if your minds are blown. Put up those faces. I double dare you. I triple dare you. Put up those faces. Stop supporting a fabrication. The masquerade is over, State of Israel. I'm not talking about the citizens. See, Netanyahu don't care about you, the citizens who are Israelis, okay? He's not interested in getting your families, these hostages home. All Netanyahu is inter interested in is committing genocide. Netanyahu must be sent to the world court, including the IDF, for crimes against God's creation. I mean, I don't use the term humanity because human means monster. Okay? It's time for Arab nations to have the testicular fortitude to speak out. It's time for the UN to have testicular fortitude, but they won't because they're corrupt. And it's time for America to expose Zionism. It's not of God. Is coming to an end. I'm not. I'm not saying that the citizens of Israel, who are Israelis, are coming to an end. But the system of Zionism. It's a system of demons who commit global butchery because they have not yet signed the international law of the 1949 Geneva, Geneva Convention. So the state of Israel frees believes that they go they can go throughout the world and just bomb people and butcher people because they have not signed the 1949 Geneva Convention. That system, Apostle Ty Kim, Apostle Kolada Kim, that system is coming down, okay? Because in the painting, the Karazi painting going back to 15, uh, 84 and 85, an allegory of truth and time, and including the 1733 painting, okay, by Daryl Troy, okay, the allegory of unveiling truth, the mask is coming off. All right, everyone, please, all of the moderators, please put up the PayPal link. Was your minds blown tonight? <laughs> Was your minds blown? Put up those faces if your minds were blown tonight, okay? Every one of you, all of the moderators, quickly, before we uh, get you out of here tonight, no one's teaching us. Put up the PayPal link, like paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group, paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group, okay? When you give unto the Lord, he'll give you more to give. Go measure, press down, shaking together, running over. Plant the Lord's tithe. It's not yours. It's God's. Okay, whether you get paid once a week, once every two weeks, once every three weeks, once a month, tie 10% of your gross, not what after Uncle Sam takes out, tie before Uncle Sam takes his out, okay, because it all belongs to Christ and not Uncle Sam, this demonic government, okay, paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group, paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. Also, in the same transaction where you will plant the Lord's tithe, plant $100 or more, okay? Please do that right now. This is according to the book of the prophet Malachi. How has a man or woman robbed God in tithes and offerings? PayPal.me forward slash GSR Mina Group, okay? I'm glad you're fearless with the truth and uncompromised, Bishop. Thank you, Pastor Leonard Yuda. I, I really appreciate that. Take this, I'm not to call this my, mouse or mice or mouse or rat. Take this or your finger. And whether you have a desktop, laptop, Apple tablet, Chrome tablet, uh, Apple Watch, Android, iPhone, 
click on the PayPal link, okay? Click on the PayPal link, okay? Uh, you can share the teaching, Pastor Dave. What you may have to do is log out of YouTube and log back in, okay? Uh, PayPal.me, just click on pay. Do it right now, okay? Follow my finger. Just go to PayPal. Go to PayPal. You don't need a PayPal link. Go to PayPal.me for slash GSR Media Group. After you click on the PayPal link, after you click on the PayPal link, then click send, plant the Lord's time, the gross of your income on your check, and also plant $100 or more according to the book of the prophet Malachi. Also, you can send uh, the Lord's tithe in the Lord's offering to Cash App. Um, Pastor uh, Colleen, if you can put up our Cash App link, which is dollar sign, then Global Revolution 1, dollar sign, then Global Revolution, which is all upper cap, capitalized letters, dollar sign, then Global Revolution 1. Plant the Lord's tithe, the gross of your income, 10%, and plant $100 or more in the same transaction. Right beside Pastor Colleen's name or right under her name, uh, our cash app link is dollar sign, then Global Revolution 1. Dollar sign, then Global Revolution 1, okay? The rest of you go to paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group, paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. Now, when you give them to the Lord, he'll give you more to give. Good measure, press down, shaking together, uh, and running over. God will give you double for your trouble, triple for your pain. No one is teaching this. And if they're telling you they're teaching this, they're lying, okay? Uh, just like Pastor Queen Sugar says, you should be like popcorn, okay? $100, $200, 300 400 500 okay? Three of you give a 1000 right now. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, okay? Right now, you listen, plant the Lord's tithe, okay? And in, on top of that, in the same transaction, plant $100 or more, okay? As an apostolic free will offering. You see, I'm agitating demons tonight, okay? PayPal.me forward slash GSR Media Group. After you click on, listen, everyone, after you click on the PayPal link, then click send, don't click request, click send, and plant the Lord's tithe, the gross of your income, 10% of the of your gross income, and in the very same transaction on paypal.me for slash GSR Media Group or Cash App, Dollar Site Global Revolution 1, then plant $100 or more. Uh, listen, three of you give a thousand. You may be a millionaire or close to it. And what we uh, had been going through for the past two and a half, three years, has not put a dent in your finances. Plant a thousand dollars. God is speaking to someone right now to plant one thousand dollars at paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. I'm telling you, Pastor Perez, my head, I'm, I'm so tired mentally. This is mind blowing, okay? And especially exposing the term Shekinah. Expose the, the, listen, God has nothing to do with a Babylonian, Persian, Roman, and Greek goddess named Shekinah Asherah. Oh, the female aspect of God, that's a lie. God is not a woman. God is not a she. God is the he who is Yeshua the Christ. I need some tea tonight. Listen, but right now I'm going to drink some water here quickly. You're right, Pastor Coley. My, my throat is getting a little hoarse, but I'm going to have some tea tonight. God bless you guys. Also, you can send your checks in your money orders um, in care of Bishop Larry Gators, P.O. Box 161. Lomina, California, 90717. And Pastor Colleen, if you can put up our key or um, P.O. box right now, and we'll end it here tonight uh, in care of Bishop Larry Gators or Larry Gators, P.O. box 161, Lomina, California, 90717. Okay. Uh, in care of Larry Gators, P.O. box 161, 161. 
Lomita, L-O-M-I-T-A, Lomita, California. Postal code, ladies and gentlemen, is 90717, okay? Uh, also, um, the rest of you, right now, go to paypal.me. It's right beside Pastor Queen Sugar's name. Go to paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. Paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. After you click on the PayPal link, then click Sam, plant the Lord's tithe, the gross. 10% of the gross of your income, and then in the same transaction, plant $100 or more, $200, $300, okay? We got students in the NFL, okay? Some known, some not known, okay? In the NBA, we got three students who play in the NHL, okay? We have a few students who play uh, in for Major League Baseball, three of them, actually four of them playing for the New York Yankees. And they give $1,000, some give more than that because these guys are multimillionaires. I got daughters who are lawyers and doctors. So we thank God. So listen, everyone, listen, brother, uh, now, uh, Pastor Perez, listen, you got to concentrate. We're not talking about that. Listen, plant the Lord's tithe and plant uh, an apostolic free wall offering of $100 or more according to the book of Malachi. Thank you uh, for being with the bishop tonight. Was your minds blown tonight? Don't leave us live, listeners. Was your minds blown? So you go back and tell these pastors, stop saying the word Shekinah. It means the feminine aspect of God. The devil is a lie. PayPal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. PayPal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. We run a tight Apostolic ship here. Don't come in here with your garbage. Block your God. Okay. Thank you for being with the bishop. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Okay. And I think I will continue this series. The upcoming module eight, volume eight of the immaculate deception of the Middle East. And I thank you. <laughs> oh, my I love agitating demons. I got some soursop tea, um, Pastor Sam, some burdock tea as well. I think I'm going to have that tonight, okay? God bless you guys, okay? We love you. We honor you. Uh, also, follow uh, the ministry and follow the bishop. Thank you, Pastor Queen Sugar. Uh, we only have one Instagram account. If you see my name on other Instagram accounts, that's not me. Let me know. Uh, at Bishop John Wick, at Bishop John Wick, which is the true IG page of not only your bishop, but our global ministry. Also go to uh, facebook.com forward slash Bishop L. Gators, Bishop L. Gators on facebook.com uh, forward slash Bishop L. Gators. You can also join our Facebook global uh, group page, which is global uh, spiritual movement, global spiritual movement or global spiritual revolution media on Facebook, Global Spiritual Revolution Media, and join us. Also, uh, I want to announce as well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Pastor Jeffrey, you got you got to pay attention. We're not talking about demons now, brother. You see, uh, listen, you got to pay attention. So go to facebook.com forward slash Bishop L. Gators. Go to Instagram, my Instagram link there is at Bishop uh wick at bishop john wick at bishop john wick that's the ig or the instagram link uh, also you can go to twitter or x my twitter or x link handle is at bishop l gators at bishop l gators on twitter slash x okay last last but never least you can also follow um uh, the bishop in the ministry on on TikTok. And I really didn't want to create. I didn't want my staff to create that. That was months ago, but a lot of the young people wanted our ministry to create our TikTok page, which is at uh, Bishop John Wick at Bishop John Wick. Good night for Los Angeles. Spread this teaching. I don't know about you today, but I believe this teaching, this this, this this series is not only the, some of the most powerful teachings I've ever done, this, but this volume uh, seven, Mojo seven, volume seven is more powerful than the previous six volumes 
combine of the immaculate deception of the Middle East. Great to see you, Dr. Bill. You got to rewind the teaching tonight. All right, paypal.me. Right now, you should be like popcorn, okay? Plant the Lord's tithe first, and in the same transaction, plant $100, $200, $300, $400, $500. You should be like popcorn, $800, $900, $1,000, Thank God for Pastor Chris Harris, one of my apostolic um, sons in Christ, a great man of God uh, from Long Beach, uh, California. Thank you, Pastor Chris Harris, for faithfully giving. For all you guys, Pastor Rick, all of you guys, thank you so much. We need your help. We are launching two major projects uh, next year in 2024. Uh, The first project is a nationally syndicated television talk show. Okay, called the Global Masterclass Television Talk Show. We're going to be inviting guest clinical psychologists, guest clinical psychiatrist people uh, from all over the world to Hollywood, either in person or uh, by Zoom or Skype to interview them concerning uh, pain and trauma. Pain is a constriction within one's mental capacity that keeps them from discovering their authentic self. That's pain. Trauma is not what happens to you. Trauma is what happens inside of you as a result of what happened to you. So the Global Masterclass nationally nationally syndicated television show will be launching in 2024. And our second major project is the Global Movement LLC, the Global Movement Studios LLC, Again, the Global Movement Studios LLC for the creation and the distribution of apostolic Christ-centered films, short films, commercials with a red pill paradigm. This is a revolution that's never been done here in Hollywood by any apostolic, okay? There's faith-based studios, but we are the first true faith-based studio an apostolic oneness studio called the Global Movement Studios, LLC. All right, paypal.me forward slash GSR Media Group. We need your help. Do that right now, okay? God is watching you and he's protecting you. Good night from Los Angeles. Share this teaching. And I want to I thank God for Pastor Colleen, Pastor Sam, all you guys sending Bishop videos and links Continue to do that on Facebook and Instagram, okay, or Twitter or X. Continue to send that to us on TikTok. Continue to do that because you're teaching bishops so I can teach you, so I can teach the world, okay? We had, I'm telling you, students from all over the world. This is a global movement through the International Ministry of Global Spiritual Revolution Media Group, New York, Los Angeles. God bless you from Los Angeles, California, from Hollywood. I'll see you guys on Thursday for Module 8, Volume 8 of the Immaculate Deception of the Middle East. And I thank you. And I want to prophesy this. Bill Gates is going to prison. Did you hear me? Bill Gates is going to prison. Netanyahu is going to prison. They're all, because these are killers, man. And we're praying for the Israeli people, our brothers and sisters in the state of Israel. We're not talking about you. We're talking about your government, which is a British registered corporation, which really does not exist. So the Palestinians are in a war against a dissolved corporation because you cannot incorporate under the same name eight months before your original corporate status runs out. That happened on October 31st, but they re-registered under the same corporate name eight months before on February 23rd, 2023. Another was the Palestinians, you have already won. You have defeated a fabrication. A masquerade, okay, masquerading since 1948. I'm not talking about the people of Israel. I'm talking about the Zionist racist corporation that the American political complex is supporting the genocide 
of Palestinians because of occupied apartheid sections of the state of Israel, West Bank, Eastern Jerusalem in the Gaza Strip. But that day is coming to an end. And the real Israelites will take over the land. Thank you, everyone. No, we're not saying that the Israelis should leave. Stay there. But I'm saying that your government is a fabrication. God bless you. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Right beside Pastor Queen Sugar's name. Right beside Pastor Sam's name. Right beside Pastor True Witness Ministries name. PayPal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. Share this teaching of this global masterclass tonight. You have my permission to share it, okay? On any um, platform throughout the internet, okay? Throughout the world, just don't alter the teaching or you will be blocked. God's holy anointing and protection over you, Bishop, uh, along with his blessings. Thank you, Pastor Rick. I really uh, appreciate that. Pray for the bishop, okay? And thank you guys for having um, the bishops back in prayer. Thank you. I love you. I'm in love with every one of you. Don't think it's strange when uh, the man of God says he's in love with you because it means I love you as Christ loves you. God bless. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Hamas must be butchered. Hamas must be destroyed. But you can't bomb your way into victory. But this is happening because of a dissolved, fabricated corporation. Zionism, your time is up. The masquerade is over. God bless you. I'll see you guys on, on Thursday. I'm not talking about the Israeli people. I'm talking about the system of Zionism. It's done. God bless you. Have a great night. I'm going to get some soursop tea. And because my throat is a little scorchy right now. God bless you. And you have to go through this teaching again. God bless you. In Christ's holy name, the bishop loves you. Good night from Los Angeles. God bless.